Hello friends, yesterday I got an email from Teachers Pay Teachers about their new platform, I guess, called ESOL. And pretty much immediately I got a whole bunch of questions from a bunch of you asking what it is, how to use it, all that stuff. So today we're gonna do an ESOL tutorial. Now, full disclosure, I haven't like dug super, super deep. I spent about an hour playing around with it. And so now I'm gonna show you what I found. Um, but basically ESOL is just the new version of TPT Digital Activities. So if you were using digital activities before, great. If not, that's fine too. It's super easy. It basically adds a digital layer over your PDF resources that you already have in your store. So in your store, you can put your PDF resources in ESOL. Now you might want to check what is currently available because at first they automatically enrolled all your resources except ones that you had specifically opted out, but now they're changing things up and so it's you have to opt them in. So I had resources, pretty much all my resources from from up until last summer were already in there unless I actually went and clicked the button to opt them out and then all of the resources I made recently like December and even back in like October um, were not in and I had to opt those in so just a heads up on that um, the way it works is that you can add a digital layer or your buyers can add a digital layer so if they already purchase something that has a PDF they can go in the PDF, they can add stuff, they can change things that you did, they can you know, take things away, they can do just one page, they can do all the pages, and then they can send it to their students either through Google Classroom or as a link. So they'll get a link where they can fill it out and then it'll go back to your TPT which is super cool. They do have to have a Google um, account, which I feel like most schools do. So just do be aware of that. But other than that, it's pretty good. So let's hop right on into the tutorial. In order to actually get there, you're gonna come up here to ESOL by TBT. There is like some really helpful stuff that they will tell you, but we're just gonna go right through. So if you see up here, it says my activities, those are things you own, and then my TBT listings. So these are all my products. You'll notice that these have different things here. So, like I mentioned, it's kind of confusing because some things were like automatically opted in and some things were automatically opted out. So my suggestion is just to go through and make sure everything is correct. Now, I specifically opted these out because they are not digital friendly. Actually, I had a ton, these are some of my best sellers. I had a ton of people sending me messages asking me how they could be digital because they're PDF. So it was automatically saying like, oh, they're digital. And I was like, I literally, I put in like humongous letters in all caps in the description. I was like, these cannot be used digital because I got so many questions about it. Anyway, so if you have something like, I left one on purpose to show you this. If you don't want it to be digital, just come over to these three dots, click opt out of easel easy easy peasy you can always opt it back in so like if you accidentally did that that's fine some other ones might be automatically opted out <laughs> and so then you might need to opt them in so just take a second and go through your stuff and see what needs to be opted in or opted out all right so i'm gonna come up here to we'll just pick drum dream girl activities because it's the first one when you click it'll ask you which pages you want now like I said, you and the buyer can both manipulate things. They still get all of the pages, but you can send just one page to the kids. Now I can see like these, the kids don't need. That one doesn't really have anything on it, but I'll leave it anyway. And so I'm just gonna take off those and click on create. You can always go back and change it later and add things and change things. Now this one, full disclosure, there's nothing to do on this page, but on this page, there are some different places where kids are answering questions. So I'm going to put an answer box right here. And the teachers also have the same access to all of these same things. So they can also add answer boxes and all the different things that we're going to do. Like theirs looks exactly the same as this. I tried it on one of my other things. So you can also add text. So I do that sometimes if I need different directions, you can do a pen or a highlighter or shapes and the shapes are now movable. If you click here, then they can be movable. You can move them around so you can have the kids like sort or drag and you can write in them. So that's really helpful. So here it says draw a picture. So I'm going to add some text that says use the pen and highlighter tools. 
so that we know how to add the picture. You can change the color, of course, and change the alignment. You can also make the text movable, which is really helpful. I have a lot of things where you are sorting, so that makes a huge difference. I'm going to come in here and add answer boxes. Jeep. Jeep. I need that one to be a little bit smaller. I keep making them a little bit too big. When it has they're almost like differentiated activities. There's the same activity, but in a couple of different ways. So you can do them with different grades, which I like. Um, it, oh, that's fancy. I didn't know you could do that. And it doesn't do it to the other pages. Cool, cool. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to copy and paste that here and here. So on this one, we're going to try the movable thing. So I'm going to add text and I'm just going to write over these and I'm going to click movable. There we go. So now if you click on preview, it'll show you this is what the kids will see. They can move that. So I'm just going to put them like off to this side so that it's not hard to read. All right, so now we have all of these and I'm going to make each one move. Oh, they're already movable because I copied and pasted. Oh, look at that. Okay, there we go. So now the kids will just drag those down to the correct drums. Easy peasy. All right. Now, one thing that currently I don't believe is available, and I say currently because do remember that they're going to add more things as time goes on. So this happens all the time. If I do a tutorial and then people are like, that's not right. It's usually that it was right when I created the tutorial, but it's no longer correct. So do be aware that things are going to change, but right now you can't add pictures and make them movable. I would love that to change. TPT, if you're listening, that would be something that would be excellent because then I could put rhythms that the kids can drag down to here and that would make life so much easier. But for now, we're going to move on um, and we're going to put drag the shapes. We're making melodies on these little two-line st staves. Um, but if I put staves on there, the kids would be like, what is that? Um, so I'm just going to put some little circles. I'm going to fill them in orange, yellow. I don't know. And then I don't like the border. That's a little bit obnoxious. And then I'm going to make it movable and I'm going to make a bunch of them. That should be plenty. Um, then I'm just going to move them here. Now, if you saw like a little text box thing popped up, you can actually write in the shapes, which is quite helpful. If you need to do that, I use that on one of my other activities. All right, same thing here, but now we need smaller little dots. Now, if anyone is curious, um, this is what the pen looks like. You can change the thickness and the color, and then the highlighter is more um, translucent, so you can use that instead. I'm going to click delete because I don't need those. I just wanted to show you what they looked like, and that is my last page. Okay, so there is everything. You can always preview it, and this is what the kids are going to see. So they see this. And it says, okay, drag the shapes. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Yeah, just like that. Ooh, we can't undo. That's unfortunate. Undo is my favorite button. So this is what the kids will see. They can move anything you said that was movable. This I did not make movable, so see, they can't move it. Um, and then they can add shapes. They can highlight. They can do a pen. They can add text boxes and different things like that. Now you can click publish. This is what we're going to see is publish easel activity. So now when people who either already own that 
product or people who buy it can go and use that activity I just made. They can also change everything. So they have access to all the same things we do. They can change everything. They can take pages out. They can add pages. So now let's look at what it looks like this way. So I'm going to come here and this is one of my products as well for jazz on a Saturday night and I can click edit pages and I just wanted to show you what it would look like if you were trying to have send it to your kids. Oh, okay. Here we need to remove the other ones. That's what we're doing. Save changes. And now it has less pages. Okay. So if I was going to send it to my kiddos, all right, let me finish that thought, Becca. If I was going to send it to my kiddos, I would come here to assign and review. So then what you do is you click assign. And the first time you do this, it's going to have you verify your address and ask you a couple of things about your school. So like I had to put in my school email address instead of my like personal one that I use for GPT. And then you can automatically share it on Google Classroom by using this. Or if you're like me and you don't have a Google Classroom account because your district thought that something else was better for some reason, um, then you can do the copy link and put it into the whatever you're using. You can put it in the chat in Zoom. You can put it in your um, learning management system. You can add it to whatever. Um, but do be aware that students need a Google email account in order to complete the activity. Now, my district has it like all the kids are automatically assigned um, signed up for Google. So that's not a problem for me, but just so that you know, and if anyone ever asks, that's what you do. Once they are finished, the assignments will pop up here when they are done and you will be able to see it, which is really, really super helpful. Also over here, you have different codes so you can add different classes. Can you rename them? That would be helpful. It doesn't look like it. Um, so you can add different assignments for different classes, which is really helpful if you are like me and you assign the same thing to a couple of different classes and that will help you to be able to sort everything. Full disclosure, I haven't used it with my kids yet, but I plan to use it next week because I want to try it out. Um, you can also title it so that it's, you know, got a title. Anyway, so that is basically all you need to know about the ESOL activities. People can still download the PDF and print it out like normal. They can still access all of the pages, even if you take some of them out because the kids don't need the terms of use page. And yeah, it's just a really great way to help your buyers to get more out of their stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have other ideas for tutorials or thoughts that you would like us to go through, let me know in the comments. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. I cannot guarantee I'm going to know the answer, but I will try. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.